It's really tough to get a grip on what the BBC's big idea is. A whole year and a teaser for a teaser for a trailer. Come on guys, let your marketing department do their jobs. If like me you've been anxious since, to be honest, January, and I do think they've been pushing their luck since January, you may have seen this meme doing the rounds. 2009 compared to 2019. It's an apt comparison. Actually, that's not fair. We did get one VR game that almost nobody can play. Big finish, but they're always good boys. The Macra Terra momentarily tied me over, and children in need. Which you can't say a bad word about because then you look like the dickhead! Yeah, people who wanted a trailer aren't soulless. Of all the valid criticisms to take against children in need, people weren't attacking the TV event. More so vented impatience of one of the BBC's biggest IPs. Fan made time is natural. Could everyone please stop being so melodramatic? This bit was lovely. A little bit overproduced and preachy, but that's the BBC. The Doctor remains a powerful role model to young kids. The BBC also shouldn't be punishing fandom for giving a shit. Both of these things can be true. So what does 2020 look like for Doctor Who? Because BBC sure as hell aren't telling us a lot. If you dug real deep, scraping the barrel for content, you may have come across the IMDB listings. These are so fake. Like, I'll be impressed if they're real, but they scream fake fan-made. The Doctor go to a planet, but then there's trouble in Spaceport 28. Come on. But what we do know for sure, Jadoon, Cybermen, Dalek, Yaz-focused story. And that's pretty much all that is confirmed. Not a lot that seemingly justifies a year's break, but hey, this isn't a outrage merchant channel, so call your horses. Hey, mad thought. What if this whole cloak and dagger year of nothing, radio silence across the board, was actually concealing something worthwhile? I don't think it's a stretch to say that maybe they're hiding more than just another Dalek story. What if they were hiding the first secret regeneration? I'd like to see a little bit more 13th like I'm sure most people do, but not every actor has to stay for three years. Just something to consider. It's on the cards. I don't know, it's a little idea. I think I'd take all of this back if there's a huge surprise like that hidden in series 11. 12? Oh god, I don't even remember. <laughs> Whoops, the comment section will love that. Okay, so what are we getting in 2020? Because TV is not the only medium. Well, if there's a TV series, you would hope there are a new line of BBC books. I actually am crossing my fingers on this because I look forward to these more than the TV stuff. Just before the new year, we have Big Finish releasing their own Christmas special, because hey, if no one else is gonna do it. Blood and Santa's Claw looks fantastic, even by Big Finish standards. Fun fact, all those names for writers? They're anagrams. And 100% one of them is Stephen Moffat. I'm picking this one up immediately. In terms of Big Finish, they've got another big year ahead. Their schedule never really slows down. We've got the 12th Doctor Chronicles with Jacob Dudman, Torchwood, where Jack has to now look after a baby. A very, very scary baby. Time War, Time War Gallifrey. Classic Doctor, new monsters with Fraser Hines confirmed, so second Doctor in the house where he can battle the Absorbaloff. In terms of monthly releases, it's still all very hush-hush, but we do know the Seventh Doctor will be taking on the Gods of Ragnarok, Morgana, and the infamous Transphobe Master. And then taking on Ace, like future Ace in Dark Universe. That looks exciting. Making them battle one another is an incredibly interesting idea. And hey, maybe it's just the year of Ace, as she comes back in the novel Ace at Childhood's End. And between that and Star Tales, I'm betting one of them becomes my favourite Whitaker story to date. Because Sophie Aldred will physically inject herself into the series by force if she has to. And honestly, credit to her. Titan Comics continues, uh, currently exploring the relationship with the Corsair, for any of you shipping people at home. And Doctor Who magazine continues as ever. I love those boys. I haven't been subscribed, but I bought my first issue in years this year. And they'll actually have new TV content, so we don't have to cover the mutants for the hundredth time. In terms of things that have been officially said, apparently Series 12 of Doctor Who wants to go back to more familiar ground. 
more like the Moffat or Davis eras. Yes, please. That's easy enough just to say. Uh, this apparently includes a darker tone, scarier episodes, a returning Christmas special. Wait, no, 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 BBC, this year or next year? THIS YEAR OR NEXT YEAR?! God, fandom to this series is like a toxic relationship I need to get out of. We know that we have many writers returning from Vinay Patel, Ed Heim, Pete Mitteague, with Chibnall taking on fewer episodes this time round, rather than half of the series. And all the way back in 2017, Chibnall described something he had called the Five Year Plan. He promised it would be bold and risky. <sighs> you got three years left, my man. But honestly, even after a year of hiatus, and I will call it a hiatus, I'm definitely burned out. You get to be burned out. I don't think the secrecy cloak and dagger of Doctor Who worked this year. I'm sure many people forgot it existed. And it's hard to call me excited for new episodes, but I am really, really pumped if the TV stuff picks up the slack like all the other mediums are. As long as Series 12 shows me something I have not seen before, I think we're going to be in for a good trip. And then, of course, there's me. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to be around as well. Videos I have lined up for 2020 are already planned. I am meticulous and very, very sad. The retrospectives will finally come to a close as I cover the 1960s, which was always a bit of a grey spot for me as a kid. Don't expect them anytime soon though, because although the Patrick Troughton one only has about six more stories I really want to check out, including this, this and this, there are at least 40 stories of the first Doctor that I need to see. Whew. And what's better is that a lot of them are novels, like whole books. So, I better get reading. Other videos planned include ranking Doctor Who by their recurring writers, every single revival New Who episode in 10 seconds or less. This one could be my magnum opus of Doctor Who fandom schlock. If anyone yourself or anyone you know can do a even decent impression of Doctors 9 through 13, or even any of them, please drop me a whistle. This project could be something special. But don't worry, I've also got opinions. Opinions for days, you know me. Here are my top 12 fictional characters in the Doctor Who universe. And then I even have another mini-series planned. Don't worry, unless YouTube truly does eat itself, um, I'm here for the long haul. Let me know which one of those sounds good and I'll push it down the production line. <laughs> production line. I'll push it down my keyboard. I'll see you guys in 2020.